to you have to be gentle to me. I have two reasons. The first is that I'm not Mark. So this is actually somebody else's talk. Uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more why Mark is in here uh, in a couple of minutes. The second reason is that it's currently it's currently about 1 a.m. in South Africa, so my body is still very much in the wrong time zone. So be gentle. Um, so I'm going to tell you just a little bit briefly about Siobhula, so the organization. Do I need it? I think, I think we have six people here. Um, so, tell you just a little bit briefly about Siobhula, so the organization that I'm working with, and then a bit more. So, what, what this talk is actually about is about taking an organization from an OER organization uh, from a, a, a foundation funded model, so we're funded by the Shuttleworth Foundation, to something self sustainable. So, we're currently in that transition phase, and it's an interesting time. Uh, not always easy. So I'll talk a little bit about OER and a little bit about trying to build something commercial using OER. Um, so we're a small organization, about eight permanent people, uh, a couple more temporary people right now, for reasons I'll explain later as well. Um, but, and, and basically what we're about, just stand here for a little while. Uh, so first though, it's, it's a typical sort of OER setup, so I, I don't think I have to explain much of that to you. you should, yeah. More of this to, to the other folks who work with. Um, but the idea is so we want to help provide more open educational resources. Um, we want to find better ways, so using technology, find better ways of presenting material, curriculum aligned material, to learners, to teachers. Um, and another big part of what we do is supporting communities, and specifically teacher communities, uh, to help them to know more about open educational resources, open licenses, use of technology in the classroom and to basically help them help themselves. Um, the, so, as I said, a lot of this is probably similar to what other people are doing. One of the big differences is just the context we work in. So, we are focused very much on the South African context, um, where this is one of the types of scenarios we have to work with. So, you have a classroom, tends to be fairly large, so 40 to 50 kids, uh, not much in terms of resources. Uh, so this is the one scenario, but on the other hand, we also have this scenario. So this is a photo from uh, a private school called Parklands, uh, not far from where I live. Uh, and they have decided quite recently that from next, from the beginning of the next school year, which starts in January in South Africa, um, every kid has to have uh, an Apple laptop. End of story. Uh, the parents pay for it and they can afford it. And so this is the other end of the spectrum. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a very a wide variety of contexts to work with, but this is the sort of the reality for us. Um, so our main product, as far as what we produce so far is concerned, uh, is a set of freely available textbooks. Uh, as I said, focus on the South African curriculum, and at this stage, the focus on two subjects: so mathematics and uh, physical science for grades 10, 11, and 12. So this has been around for a while. This has existed for a while, um, and. The, the interesting question is, so two interesting things. One is just how do we uh, distribute these books, and the other is how do we create them. In terms of distribution, and again within the South African context, um, online is okay, but not great. So internet uh, penetration in South Africa is less than 20%, um, and again, this is, much, this is very much also at the higher end of the scale, so like the, the second photo, not the first one that you saw earlier. And so if we do just this, that is definitely not enough. You won't have the kind of broad impact that we're hoping for. Uh, however, everybody has a mobile phone. Uh, and this is sort of a, it's not just South Africa that's like this, much of Africa is like this. Uh, people who don't have access to good homes or running water have a mobile phone. Uh, so we actually, so 100% is, is now out of date, we actually have something like 110% penetration. So we have more than one phone per person in the country. Um, so. And so what we've done with the textbooks to help address this is to make it available on mobile platforms, and not so, by which I do not mean smartphones. The smartphone is a, is a computer uh, with a browser, so that falls in the previous category. Um, regular mobile phones are web enabled. And so here is a photo of a very, very simple version, so this is not a high-end phone. Um, you can see text, in, and I don't have a photo of this portion, but you can see simple images as well. So, what we've done to do that, to, to achieve this, is to have the content, the textbook content, available 
uh, in an open uh, online platform called Connections, which some of you might know, um, and then created basically uh, a new um, theme, a new skin for it. So there's a, there's a proxy server between the mobile phone and Connections, which takes, pulls the content from Connections and it applies a skin to it to make it render properly on the mobile phone. Um, and then, so that's scenario number two. Scenario number three is um, hard copy textbooks are still the way to go if you want to reach every, every learner in the country. End of story. So whatever we do, we also have to produce uh, a PDF, so something that you can print. Uh, and I'll get back to this a little bit later. So much of what we're doing right now is getting the next revision of these books uh, ready in time for the school year. Um, and again, uh, first prize is have the physical textbook ready so that school, so that whoever can print it out and give it to a kid. Uh, second prize is also have it on a mobile phone. Third prize, or almost an afterthought, is have it online. Okay. Right. So, in terms of producing textbooks, so th this is this is only half a joke. Um, we so I mentioned before that the books we have right now are maths and science, physical science, which includes physics and chemistry in the South African curriculum for grades 10, 11, and 12. Uh, two week two weekends ago, I believe, we had a sprint in our offices down in Cape Town uh, with 20 teachers for two days. Um, and the idea was to write a textbook, and this is the, uh, the life sciences textbook. So that's uh, life sciences, the new name for biology, and some of the sort of biochemistry associated with that. Um, and uh, well, the, the short version is that it basically worked. So after two days, so two days meaning 48 hours, from lunchtime Friday until lunchtime Sunday, uh, we had 20 teachers, sort of pretty much all day, I have to add, uh, stuck inside sort of uh, fairly large offices. And they, they had computers that access the internet. They also brought along their own notes. So we, we encourage them to bring their own notes, work examples, whatever they have, and then do two things. The first is try and make them more comfortable with the process of writing a textbook that's going to be open and that's going to be online. Uh, and with all the other, on a platform like Connections, with all this, this stuff that comes along, so it's remixable, other people can uh, view it, use it, change it, do whatever they like. Um, the, the, the biggest challenge here is not so much the technology, um, but is just getting them comfortable with open licenses. So a typical teacher, at least in South Africa, is willing to take this set of notes and put it next to the photocopy machine in the school and let other teachers copy it, uh, because then it's sort of a contained exercise. But they're not comfortable with putting it online and letting anybody copy it. And the main reason is they say, oh, well, I, I borrowed something here and I use it a bit there, and I, 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 I don't know if it's okay to, to just share this stuff. Um, so part of what we do, so the raising awareness is just informing, informing teachers uh, about open licenses, how it works, and what you can and cannot do. And then based on that, we ask them to bring their notes of what, what, they, what they feel comfortable with sharing online under, under a CC BY license. Um, and then there's also a bit of technology, but we've been developing tools to make the technology a bit, a bit uh, uh, easier. So teachers, so during a sprint like the one we had two weekends ago, uh, they bring their own laptops, they can use their own word processor, so they use Microsoft Word, OpenOffice, whatever they have. Um, and then we have some software in the background that converts from some document format into ConnectSmell, the, the format used by Connections, and then a client for uploading the ConnectSmell to the Connection server. Um, so that sort of pipeline we've tried to make as, as easy as possible, so just to reduce that barrier. So by the end of two days we had 300 plus pages worth of content, um, with text, images, uh, not so much video, although I'll get to that in a second, um, online and available. So it's, it's actually on Connections right now, you can download it. Uh, the caveat is that it's rough. Right? So you can write a textbook in two days, but to finish it off and to make it nice, it takes a little bit longer. And so the, sort of the second phase of phase right now is the same group of teachers are currently involved in a revision process. So they read each, each other's work, they can make comments, we have an online annotator, we can highlight a piece of text and type it whether you want to make a correction or you have any kind of comments on that. Um, so, after, so this is one iteration where you gather comments and then they sit down again and they revise the material themselves. This is now happening in a distributed way. So we don't pull, pull all of them back to the offices again. They can do this where they, wherever they are. Um, and this repeats a couple of times. And the important thing is repeating, so iteration, uh, and tight feedback. So you want people to be able to comment on other people's work and to receive comments on their own work 
um, as quickly as possible and so that they can incorporate those suggestions, uh, corrections, whatever, into the next version. You want to try and go through as many versions, as many revisions as you can within the, 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 the amount of time that you have. Um, and so the idea is by the end of this, we have what we typically call version zero of the book. So something that we're, we're willing to give to somebody to try and use in a classroom, but it's not what we would consider a publishable book just yet. And we have had people use version zero of some of our previous book, the maths and physical science books, successfully in the classroom. So they don't use it as the only textbook, but as a supplementary resource. And it's free. So they can choose to use it or not. They can choose to pick a particular chapter or section and ignore all the others, um, and that's just fine. That's, that's all covered under, under the, the open license. So, that's all great. Um, and up until now, uh, as I said, we're still funded under the, by, by the Shuttleworth Foundation. Um, but that's going to come to an end fairly soon. I'm not clear when exactly. Either, either at the end of February or at the end of next February, so we'll see. Um, but pretty soon. So the question is, how do you move from this foundation-funded, generating open resources uh, model to something where you can still keep doing that, but have a source, an, an external source of revenue, or more than one source of revenue? And there are some problems with this. Um, so one thing you could do is you could say, well, there's all this content, let's, let's try and uh, make bound textbooks and sell the textbooks or something. Um, so in essence, taking volunteers' contributions, volunteers' content contributions, and then selling that on somehow. Um, and the problem with that is that a lot of what we're doing is not just creating content, but building communities of teachers and other volunteers. We also um, have quite a few graduate students uh, helping out with these, with these uh, strengths. Um, and so you're basically breaking that sort of relationship, breaking the trust you have with them, the effort that they put in uh, for free, well, well, they pay with pizza or something like that, but essentially for free. Um, and then if you're monetizing that and using that as a stream of revenue as profit for the company, then you're, you're breaking that relationship. So that's a hard one to do and we're, we're steering <coughs> that. Um, and the second problem is, on the one hand, you want to reach as many, many people as possible, especially, so again, just sort of to place this in the South African context, um, we have serious problems nationwide, especially in rural areas, with under-resourced schools, with textbooks not getting to the schools, with teachers not, not doing what they're supposed to be doing. There are, there are serious problems. So one of our aims is to get educational resources to the kids as broadly as, as, broadly as we can. Um, but if we want to make money from some things, we have to put it behind the paywall. So if, if, you, if you want to get it to everybody, you can't charge for it. And if you want to charge for it, then you run the risk that you can't get it to everybody. So there's this tension, so that you have to try and figure out which bits can be made free available for everybody to still achieve our aims, and which bits can we monetize in order to have a source of revenue. Right, so in terms of what is free, so this is, so just briefly, what is currently free and what will stay free um, with, with, within the sort of the, the sustainability model is the textbook itself. Um, the online version of the textbook and also the mobile version of the textbook, which is enriched. So the, the physical textbook, you can't have things like videos and simulations in there, but in the online version and the mobile version, you can. Um, so here, all of these things, the video simulations, those are all pulled from other open resources, uh, and we're distributing them along with the rest of our open content in a, a, a nicely sort of packaged curriculum, South African curriculum online version, and that stays free. Um, there are also exercises in the books, and you can go online to find work solutions to the exercises. Um, that stays free. And this is just a mock-up, so it's not very pretty. But um, the idea is you want to see the textbook on one side and have Q&A on the other side. So we're also we're currently actually developing, which is why this is a mock-up. Um, but it's basically a forum. But the idea is that the forum it has hooks into the textbook. So you view the textbook online, and while you're browsing the textbook, you can see little icons down the margin showing you where discussion is happening. So if a particular student had a problem, at, uh, sorry, a question about a particular section, they can ask it um, and get answers from either other students or from <coughs> teachers or from volunteers, anybody who's, who's answering questions. And you can follow the discussion alongside the textbook, so in context. And the idea is that when you have trouble in a particular section, and if you're viewing the book online or on your phone, then you will be notified as soon as there's a bit 
where there's some discussion going on, and either you can just go read the discussion to get some more information, or if you're also if, if you're also having trouble understanding a particular section, you can go look at the discussion to see if it's already been addressed, or otherwise um, start a new question to, to get your answers. Um, okay. So first off, we thought, okay, uh, we provide some additional services for the books, okay, but we have to get the books out there, so we have the free books. Um, and then the one thing you have to do in South Africa to be able to distribute your books to schools is get on something that's called the government approved list. Uh, so especially because they recently changed the curriculum, they had this whole process of publishers and everybody who's interested in selling uh, textbooks to students, uh, revising their textbooks to align with the new curriculum. Uh, submitting them to government for review, and then some of them get on, some of them get on, some of them don't. If you're on the list, then teachers are allowed to buy your book. If you're not on the list, they're not even allowed to buy your book at all, so you're just not in the picture. They can use your book as, uh, as an additional resource, but they do also have to buy at least one book, exactly one book, from the government approved list. So it's a pretty big deal uh, if, if you're interested, as we are, in getting your books to kids in schools. Uh, the short version is we didn't get onto the list. So that's a problem because now teachers don't even have access to buying your book. Uh, but then what happened, and this is <laughs> sort of was an interesting twist, is then the government folks got back to us and they said, well, they, you're not on the list, but we're still interested in printing your books ourselves. They're free, right? So we can print them, right? Uh, and, well, the answer is yes, uh, but then sort of the annoying bit is, well, th there goes part of your revenue stream. Like, if you're, in if you're interested in selling books to teachers, then, uh, and if the government is just going to print them for every kid in the country, that kills off the revenue from selling books, but it opens up a whole bunch of other opportunities. So what ended up happening is, um, so we do have, an, so we're currently, and this is why nobody else from the company is here, in the process of updating the books based on a new set of specifications that were hashed out during a workshop with some people from government and curriculum experts and the whole deal. And they said, if um, we're going to pay you to make these changes, and then we're going to print the books for everybody, which is great from the broad reach perspective. I mean, this, this, is a, this was and still is a really big deal. Uh, it's a little bit of a sort of a crunch thing because we have very little time to do it, and, um, and people at the office aren't getting much sleep right now. Um, but it's worthwhile, and the, so so from our end, um, the, the the business model is now this is, yeah the business model is now books go to everybody, and we want hooks from the books to um, other available resources. So things that are online or on the mobile phone, um, and the same way that you have hyperlinks on web pages, we put uh, short codes, so just sort of random sequences of numbers and letters in the books where you can go to the website or onto the mobile site and type in that code, and that'll take you to the relevant link, whatever it might be. It could be uh, a video that we can't show in the book, but we show the short code and say, if you type this in, then you'll see the video online, and that's still free. Uh, video simulations, uh, solutions to exercises, all of this stuff you can get online as well. So the idea is a kid can sit in a classroom or at home with a text physical textbook, work through it, and if they want to see something extra, use their mobile phone, type in a short code, and get the video or the whatever it might be. Um, and then because we, so, so this is basically our mechanism for driving people from the physical textbook to the website or the mobile site. And there we can offer additional services. The, um, the two things we're looking at at this stage for actually generating revenue, so two paid services we're looking at. Uh, one is again Q&A. But this time Q&A, so answers from an expert. So if you're sitting somewhere, and this is actually a real use case in, in South Africa or maybe other parts of the world as well, um, where you have either a poor teacher or an absentee teacher, um, and you're sufficiently motivated yourself to work through the book, but you get stuck somewhere. Now, who do you ask? Um, so this, this is sort of the, where the ask an expert uh, hook comes in. Or you're a kid, you're busy working on something at home, and you, you have a good teacher, but you'd like you'd like, you would like an answer right now, and you're willing to pay for it, or you know, you, you can afford to pay for it. Um, that's the one. The second one is online practice. So let me see if I have a slide on this. Oh, I think I have one a bit later, but I'll just talk about it now. Online practice. So you've done the exercises in the book, but you want to practice some more, and especially you want to practice when it gets to exam time. You want to practice some more questions in preparation for your test, your exam, whatever it might be. So the second thing we're working on is an online um, 
basically, it's a mixture of an online assessment bank and a user interface to learners where they can uh, answer questions, get word solutions, and the system tracks their responses. So it, it starts building up a picture of how well they're doing uh, and it, it measures their progress. And the plan, we're not there yet, but the plan for the future is to use that picture of how well a person is doing to suggest, to, to make suggestions to that individual, to the student, but what they could do to, to, to improve. So you could give them more practice exercises on a particular topic if they're having trouble with that one topic. You could suggest revision material on that topic. Um, if the teachers are connected to the system, they could uh, get some feedback on which concepts a particular student is struggling with and then intervene on specific things rather than trying to teach the same thing to absolutely everybody all the time. Um, so these are the kinds of things we're looking at. And I sort of left that for last because in order to make this work, we actually have an interesting scenario now where we've been doing everything under CC BY. Um, but except for the, the new revision of the textbooks that um, is being worked on right now, that is under CC BY ND. So ND meaning no derivatives, the opposite of, of SA, share like. And the reason is, if we leave it under CC BY and give it to the government, they can print it or they can change it. And so we, we actually, we talked to them about this and we made sure that they're okay with it and they said yes. Um, so leaving it under CC BY ND, we can put one or two pages of essentially advertising material in the front of the book, but basically it's just saying there exists this website with additional resources, this is how you access it, and the short code, so the links from the book to the online resources, we can leave that in and they can't take it out. This is what's going to make the, uh, the business model, the sustainability model, work. Um, so there's still the CC BY version, but there's now also a CC BY ND version. And part of what we're planning on doing is, so we want to update the books, um, and it's one of the wonderful things of open educational resources is you can keep updating them. Um, so we, part of the, the plan is we get teachers, and this is already happening, to annotate the current version of the books. So we bring out the book, there's an online annotator, you can highlight bits of text and type in comments. Uh, and then for the next revision, so basically for the next school year, we get an editor uh, and, and try to incorporate as many of those suggestions, corrections, whatever they might be, into the next version of the book. So that every year, or I guess once it stabilizes, this might not happen every year, but in principle every year you could bring out a new version of the book that is significantly better than the previous one, until you reach a point where the book is sort of kind of stable and, and good. Um, so that's where the CC BY side comes in, and then where the CC BY ND is just the, 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 the latest version of the book is basically under the ND license, so we still have something that we can use to send people to, to the website. Yeah. So what's in the ND version, aside from these two pages, that's different from the CC BY version? At this stage, a whole bunch of revisions that came out of this workshop with government folks. So doesn't that make your CC BY version kind of die? Um, yes, but we don't feel bad about it because every kid in the country is going to have one anyway. That, I mean, a hard copy of the CC BY ND version. And because of this revision process and that, I mean, you can basically think of it as a, as a sort of a bit of a delay. The, the latest version is under CC BY ND. The, the, the latest minus one version is under CC BY. So all the revisions go in next year to the CC BY version? The for, for the next school year, sorry, for January, yeah. Um, so basically... Yeah, let's go ahead with good. I'm basically sort of done with my school. So. The government pay for books to provide for the students. Right. So, so what, 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 what attracted them to this whole process is that they get, they get to have a say in what the book looks like, which is not something that they have with the traditional publishers. The publishers take the curriculum that's published by the government, go through it, write their textbook, put it on the... Uh, into the process for getting onto the approved list, and they either make it or they don't. End of story. Here, the, the government officials and their curriculum experts, and whoever they want to invite, actually have a say in what's going to go into the book. And they can say, well, if each, we want you to change these specific things for these reasons, and then we're happy with it. Uh, and I, I think that's a very big part of what's, what's putting them into. So the ND clause is a really, really extreme way to make sure that those two pages stay in. Um, did, did you talk about or consider having a separate clause that just required those pages stay in but still allow other kinds of derivatives? So making a custom license? 
Exactly, you're, add, you're adding a, a clause to the qualification of what the by attribution. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking yeah. that. Like, could you say proper attribution of this is inclusion of these two pages? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. so we wouldn't be able to do that at connections that we're doing because we don't allow you to customize that, but it would be a much. So it, it would have to keep the two pages and all the links from the book to the site, mm -hmm. right? Um, Attribution clause, I think. What? Well, well you know, I guess, so, so I, I, guess, I guess the question is, is if you know if MD is is sort of the tool you're using within the Creative Commons license to sort of keep this little bit of information in. It also incurs sort of stop cramping down on a lot of sort of legitimate you know uh, modifications. And just you know, were you married using Creative Commons licenses, or did you even? Discuss using a so, license. part of the reason why, why the whole indie thing, why I don't feel that bad about it, is because it's so it's, it's a living project, and there are going to, and this, it's an iterative project. So, the, the the thing that's currently under CC by ND will, within a year or two, be under CC by. Um, I mean, in a way. And this is where this sustainability thing comes in again. You're, you're using the, the sort of the, the cutting edge version of whatever you have to, to try and make money, um, but still eventually releasing, and eventually is not a long time, it's not 10 years or five years even, it's one or two years, releasing everything you have under CC BY. Um, yeah, so we didn't really have a very big long discussion about this in, in, in part because of time constraints, and in part because CC BY ND is an easy thing to understand in comparison to hashing out something. Um, well, and they're doing it with one set, like these tenth grade books that got onto the yeah. the list. So yeah, because I, you know, I'm kind of concerned about this too. But but it is an experiment. It's not their whole entire library of books yet, unless it's wildly <laughs> successful. No, no. But no. if there's some other way to do it, it would be interesting. Okay. Well, I, it seems like this is sort of um, like journals that have some form of an open access policy where after six months the author can do with it what she wants. Um, so you've got this time limit where MD goes away right. and then after that it becomes shareable. Right. So do you, it, do there's models for it out there. Do you advertise it that this book is CC by MD until this day and after? Because we, because this will you know, make sure for yeah, every second that after, I mean, this is what we, what what I did with you know some 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 movies. That okay, I can keep, I, I can I can make I can I can allow you to use my music, but make sure that on the January first, two thousand twelve, this is this is easy by itself. Right. And another question, that was really uh, surprising for me, maybe because I also come from a young democracy, that uh, that, uh, that that you that you, you think that uh, the government filling with the content of the textbooks. Yes. I mean, because uh, I, most of the time we think in Poland, we, we, we think about the future of textbooks. Is how to how to how to how to make the government not in a in a position which will make it un unable to in any way you know fill with content. I mean, so you know, this is very political. I mean, and admittedly for us, as as a, well, I mean, we care about the content, right? And we care a little bit about the curriculum because we have to make stuff aligned to the curriculum. But we really care about the content. Um, and so it, it's a painful process to 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 talk to to government people because they're very hard line about certain things when it comes to content, sometimes for political reasons. Um, so I guess the w one positive thing on that front in terms of the workshop is it wasn't just a, a situation where they told us what they want and then we have to go do it. It was it wasn't actually a workshop, so we had significant input in. What, in a, what, what ends up in the final book, and, and so did they. So we fought back on a whole bunch of things. Uh, and some of them they relented on, some of them, some of them they didn't. Um, but if you want to, yeah, so it's, it's a trade-off between making exactly what we want and not listening to government folks on the one hand, and getting the book to every learner in the country on the other hand. Uh, sorry, I keep saying learner, that's the new South African word for students. Uh, so every student in the country on the other hand. Um, in the longer, so in the short run, it's more important to us to a uh, spread our name and b get people to just be aware of the 
content and the additional services, whether they're free or not, some of them are free, some of them are not, to make them aware of that, um, which at this, stage, at this stage most people are not. Uh, but within a year or two they will be. And then the picture changes a lot. So we, we were, so yeah, so ha having government uh, input into the process is both painful and helpful, and we do get to push back. And we're also, in the end, the ones, we're still the ones who write the books. Um, the, the only way that changes is they, they review the books now. So there's a sort of a formal review at the end of this month where they, when it's already happening, but there's sort of the deadline at the end of the month, but they then go through and say, okay, we're happy, we're going to print it. Um, one thing that counts in our favor, and don't repeat this to too many people, is that government folks are kind of lazy. So once, once you've had the workshop and you've shown them something that looks okay, they're most likely going to say, at, at the end, they're going to say, yeah, it's fine. But you think they would have been energetic enough to go and remove all your links? Your little embedded sneaky links that you had all through the no. Well, maybe not. But the two pages, yeah, they could have easily sure. ripped those out. I can see that being an issue. Well, one, one more question. I, I, th I think we're out of time, so if anybody wants to leave, don't feel bad. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to, to answer more questions.